In this session, we're going to learn how to adjust monetary values for inflation. We all have heard of inflation, and inflation is something that's an ever-present part of our life. It's a sustained increase in prices over time. Now, the causes of inflation, it can be that, that wages get bid up. For example, if there's a shortage of a certain kind of worker or a certain kind of sp skill, employers will bid up the value of that labor. Um, sometimes there's a growth in the money supply, and that in and of itself may be inflationary. It not necessarily is, but it may be inflationary. But those don't really matter for us as analysts. What we really want to do is to make sure that when we compare dollar amounts over time, whether it's income or spending or taxes or any other financial value, that we adjust for inflation. And because of inflation, a dollar today uh, doesn't buy what it used to. The value of, of the dollar goes down over time as the price of goods or services inflates. Let's take this very simple example that I've used for years to illustrate what happens with inflation over time and how our pay has to increase to keep track with inflation. In 1983, when I uh, had a master's degree. I, I got my first job working at the University of Iowa as a researcher in their College of Medicine. And, and for that job, I was paid the princely sum of $19,500 a year. So the, the, the question there is, given inflation over time, what would a master's graduate have to earn in, let's say now, 2013, to have the same purchasing power I did in 1983. Well, there's a quick way to calculate inflation. You can go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, www.bls.gov, and you can use their inflation calculator. And I'm going to do that right now. Right here, I earned $19,500, and I earned that. That was my pay in 19. 83. And what I want to know is how, what pay would I have to have in 2013 to have the same purchasing power? And the answer is I would have to make $45,520, almost $26. $45,500 would be roughly the same purchasing power, the same buying power as I had in 1983 when I took my first job as a researcher. So it's clear that one needs to understand how the value of money changes over time. So where would we go to find inflation measures or inflation indexes? Well, the one that's most commonly used is called the Consumer Price Index. And that's what will be reported uh, in the news frequently. Once a month we'll get, or quarterly, we'll get a declaration of the Consumer Price Index, and it tells us whether our prices have been going up at a high rate, a low rate, or a moderate rate over time. I'm going to click on this right now, and we're going to uh, go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, where I can find the Consumer Price Index for several categories of, of uh, consumers. We have all urban consumers, which is where most people live, all urban wage earners and clerical workers. There's different categories. Average price data has various. But I'm going to go to the, the data set here, and we're, gonna, we're going to uh, just zero in a little bit on this. Um, first off, we're going to go, there's several categories. You can get the US city average or large city average, or smaller city averages. There are also regional calculations. For example, here in Iowa, uh, perhaps we would choose the Midwest urban values uh, as our, our basis for prices. Because prices change not only for different items at different rates over time, they change for different areas for different rates over time. So we're going to pick the U.S. city average for now because that's what we normally use. Now you can have a composite or for all items here. We could choose that. 
or we could look at specific categories like food or we could go down a ways and we could find housing or we could find transportation or we could find medical care all of these categories have different rates of inflation but for our purposes we're going to we're going to go to the all items and I'm going to get the data. Now the data are going to come out on a monthly basis and that's a little bit too much information to work with. So we can go over here to the formatting options and we can do two things. First thing, I want annual data. Annual data. I just want the average price change over a year. And then for this one, I want to go back to 2000 so that I have a good series. I'm going to retrieve the data now. It's, re it's returned my my uh, consumer price index series and I'll explain this in just a second. I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to include a graph and I'm going to click go and now what we have are, uh, is our, a graph of inflation over time from 2000. You can see it rose a little bit sharply here in 2007 into 2008. Then we had the Great Recession and prices did not rise. In fact prices came down. Um, we had deflation during this period of time and then slowly as we began to recover prices started to rise again. So you can see the long-term trend in inflation. And if I go down over here we can see the annual index values of inflation. And the way to read this is that it takes $229.59 in 2012 to buy what it only took $172.20 back in 2000. So you see the effects of inflation over this period of time. Or it took $229.59 to buy what it took about $201 to buy back in 2006. So you can see again how inflation erodes at our purchasing power over time or to state it a different way we need more money to buy the same thing over time. We can also find specific prices for specific produced commodities. That could be a manufactured good, it could be a food good. These are prices measured at the producer level, not at the consumer level. So let's think of these as producer prices or the prices that manufacturers or service providers receive for their products. And you can get that from the producer price index. And for we know this, for example, that uh, some technology devices actually have become cheaper over time. As technology becomes better, some of these devices cost less over time. Other things, of course, cost more. And then the last category, and this is where more economists will probably do they're, they're adjusting for inflation. They will use something called the implicit price deflator from the Bureau of Economic Analysis to do their adjustments. It's perfectly okay for most purposes to use the consumer price index. If you're studying a particular industry, you might want to look at the producer price index. If what you're doing is looking at the whole economy um, with, a, with, with a certain kind of context, uh, that has something to do with national income and product accounts, you might prefer to use the implicit price deflator. Adjusting for inflation is very easy. The first thing we need, and we just finished looking at them, is a table of deflators. And I'm going to use, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, I'm going to use that annual series in, in the upcoming example. I'm going to use that annual series of consumer price index changes to adjust some numbers. Next, we need to determine our base year, the year that we want to express our dollars in. Usually, we want to express our dollars in the most current year available, but in the case of the example that I'm going to show here in just a second, my last year of data is 2011. So what I'm going to do is express my data in constant 2011 dollars. 
The adjustment is very simple. You're going to take the CPI base year, in my case it's 2011, and you're going to divide that by the CPI index value for the year that we're, we're, we're studying. And we're going to multiply that times the nominal value, which, which in this case is going to be the average earnings or the average wages and salary. So I'm going to bring up that spreadsheet right now. So here is a spreadsheet for the state of Iowa, and it's the average earnings, the average wage and salary per job received in the state of Iowa. Now, these values here are what we call nominal values. They have not been adjusted for inflation, or they're also called the current values. And what we want to do here is to calculate these as inflation-adjusted values. So let's use the formula that I just said we were going to use. We're going to start a calculation. And what it's going to be is our base year. And we're always going to have the base year. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in this here so that I'm always reading from row 14. Divided by my index, by the month or the year uh, that I'm, I'm currently on, times the nominal value of that same period. And I'm going to multiply this all the way through. Oops, it found an error. Let's find out where my error is. There we go. It fixed it itself. And we're going to multiply this all the way down. You can just do that by double clicking on the corner. OK. Well, we can see that we get the same number in 2011, but all of these numbers have been ex expressed in adjusted 2011 amount. So it tells us how much our pay uh, for the average worker in Iowa has increased over the years. If you just look at the nominal value, and I'm going to calculate the percentage change, it's going to be the new number divided by the old number minus 1, and we'll format that as a percentage right here. If we do that, it's, it says, well, Wages and salaries have gone up 40% in 11 years, and that sounds fantastic. But in terms of purchasing power, that's not quite the way it reads. We've, our wages and salaries have gone up. We're, we're in better shape relative to inflation. But the real gain in wages and salaries in Iowa is 7%. And so here's what it looks like. If you were, you were going to say that, you know, wages rose 40% in Iowa over the last 11 years, this is what your graph would look like. And it would be a sensational claim. And if you didn't know better, you would think that's a good deal. But in inflation-adjusted amounts, our real wages grew by 7%, which is good, but it's a stark difference from the nominal values. And by the way, you can look at this and you can see that since the recession, wages have actually been, in inflation-adjusted terms, very flat. There's not been hardly any growth in Iowa over the last four or five years. So this is why we need to adjust for inflation. It erodes our purchasing power over time. And to compare apples with apples, we must always compare monetary amounts in a way that adjusts for inflation so that we understand the real or the inflation-adjusted changes. And by not adjusting for inflation, we create a misleading sense of the value of change, whether it's taxes, whether it's government debt, or whether it's income or prices. And it leads to sensational conclusions about the economy and our personal well-being.